Hello, everybody. Saturday, March 10th, 2018, 4 14 p.m. We are 82 days, 7 hours, 45 minutes, and 6 seconds away from the beginning of the Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, also, do not forget, we spring forward uh, overnight tonight. So, I always forget that. So, I figured I'd throw it in the video to remind those of you that uh, also tend to forget. I forget every single year, uh, pretty much without fail. Now, we are continuing to monitor the possible third nor'easter in a two-week period, um, which is looking to uh, look a little like it's going to happen. Let's just put it that way. Now, we're going to look at a few different charts here. I've shown you this one before. This is a little bit quick to watch, a little hard to follow, but the reason I'm showing you this is because we could be dealing with it's a winter storm plus the nor'easter once again and that's why in my past video I put Skylar in the title because that would be our next winter storm now if this does indeed form which it looks like it's covering a significant amount of states in the northeast by the time that low pressure moves up I'm going to explain this low pressure which is actually starting off as an explosion of big big thunderstorms in the gulf and you gotta see this on the satellite it's pretty incredible to watch uh, which will be dumping a lot of rain on Florida, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and then as we get up in towards Virginia and West Virginia, we could be dealing with snow. And you see that right here. You see some purples and blues here. That is certainly uh, northern areas of Virginia, West Virginia, and then uh, lots of cold air and weather and snow for the Northeast once again just as the low pressure like we always see it's like a, uh, a mimic map we get that low pressure riding up the East Coast meeting with another low pressure they begin to counteract with each other and then guess what nor'easter number three in two weeks so uh, a lot to talk about here here is a wide satellite image of what's going on um, up to current time so this is uh, the storms I'm talking about. You can see them just totally exploding in the Gulf. They're going to begin to cause a lot of rain in Florida, I believe overnight tonight, if not already, some areas of Panhandle looks like first. But the deal with the, um, the other southern states here, Louisiana into Mississippi and Alabama, we are going to have tornado watches and warnings. Uh, there's going to be a lot of wind going on. And once again, I know this sounds repetitive, but... You, you need to be repetitive when it comes to uh, weather ex explanations, at least. Uh, we have high shear wind moving west to east across the country, all the way from California, all the way out to the Atlantic Ocean. That is high altitude winds, and then we have the upflow from the Gulf. Now, when you get those crisscrossing winds, that is why tornadoes are always common in this area. It's, it's, a, uh, it's always been that way. It always will be that way unless there's some drastic change in our jet stream. Uh, but again, uh, areas of uh, north Louisiana uh, into mid to north Mississippi and then western to uh, northwest Alabama, uh, the next 24 to 48 hours uh, will be some tornado watches, some warnings, um, at least from what I'm gathering from the data. Now, as this pr uh, system moves up towards the northeast, that uh, that warning gets less and less because we do get less tornadoes. It's not impossible. Uh, when I used to live in New York, we had a tornado right in the Hudson Valley that uh, you could still see damage from. Uh, trees were destroyed. It went right over a major highway. So it is absolutely possible, but this time of year is when we start seeing the tornadoes all in this part of the country. Now what I want to show you is a more high-def version. We've seen this chart many times. Also very useful chart for water vapor. This is low-level water vapor, so this will uh, directly affect us on the ground. Um, and once again, you just check out the Gulf here. Right around this area, just to the southeast of Texas, you're going to see these storms literally blow up. They just go boom, and whenever you see those shades of green in there, you know that is high, dense moisture. So that is not necessarily the low pressure that is going to move up the coast. The low pressure is actually beginning. Sorry about that. That's my earthquake app going off, which it just does all day long. Uh, the low pressure that we're going to be dealing with that's going to move out to the coast and then interact with the low pressure coming down from the north, which uh, will cause this possible nor'easter again, is actually forming more in the middle of the country, and you're going to see that here. 
So as I move forward, you see this band of moisture now, these storms, huge amount of moisture in this, guys. Look at the greens in there. And that's what Florida is going to be dealing with. And then you see it start, the, the intense part of it kind of dips down um, in towards Cuba and towards the Keys. So the Keys may get uh, some significant wind, rain, storms from this. Um, and they're also talking about storm surge. Now the storm surge is also going to be an issue for the Northeast once again. Um, that is because we have the rotating low pressures that are going to meet. And again, that's why I bring up this chart here, because you can see the L's. Now watch, follow the, the L that begins right here. There it is, it moves across, and then it moves up. So the, the low pressure is not coming from that Gulf storm I just showed you. I'm showing you that to um, allow the people in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, so on and so forth, know that they have a significant amount of rainfall coming with strong storms involved in it. Now, I also brought up the lightning chart. Uh, this is actually in the thumbnail. Now, look at the amount of lightning being caused by this system that is blowing up in the Gulf. Now, you can use these charts to um, compare and contrast with each other, and you directly see why this lightning is here. It's because of these storms. Now, as we move forward, this is current time is frame 200. So when I bring it back, this has already come and gone. But I wanted to show you how these storms form. And look at that, just right in the dead center of the Gulf, these things just explode with moisture. This is over a few hours, and then this is where we're at right now. So that's why you're seeing on the lightning chart, all the lightning is right there. And I just thought that was really cool to show you guys. Now, um, if you get... Uh, the settings right, you can see all the sensors, there you go, right there. There was just a lightning strike in Cuba, and another one in the Gulf instantly right now. And all these green dots you see here are all the sensors all over the country that pick this up and allow us to have this chart, which is uh, awesome. I think this is a great chart, I love following this, I look at this at least two, three times a day, just to see, you know, where the lightning is. Now you could actually use this chart for all over the world. You can go to Europe, uh, anywhere you want to. You can have the whole globe pulled up. It's a little bit chaotic when you have that pulled up because there's always lightning going off. It's kind of hard to follow things. But once again, we are talking about this possibility of the nor'easter. Um, so this part is, this moisture will be part of it nonetheless. But like I said, that low pressure that's going to eventually move west to east over the top of uh, Louisiana into Mississippi and Alabama, that is also going to be that tornado threat. The tornado threat is not necessarily coming from this uh, explosion of moisture. It's going to add to the moisture itself, but the tornado warnings and watches are coming from this part right here. And you can see that starting to move across as I move the band over, and it comes right around this area. Now, if we go over to Tropical Tidbits, our favorite chart in the whole entire world, uh, you can see right now that this is what they're saying. This is a very severe area right now. That's where the lightning is. That's where those storms are exploding. And then as I move forward, you can see that it goes right over just underneath now Lake Okeechobee. Now, a couple days ago, if you guys remember, that strip was dead on parallel with Lake Okeechobee. So some of these more severe storms may be affecting uh, more of the southern areas of Florida, uh, possibly Miami, if it makes it all the way across. You can see the moisture there. But this is right here, that low system system that is going to move across and then it's going to come up here and then it's going to interact with a separate low system. Now before I even get to that point, we are still dealing with snow in the north. Uh, areas of northern New York, areas uh, like, like Buffalo, uh, still from the nor'easter that we just got over uh, because it is still spinning in a counterclockwise motion and it's pulling moisture from the ocean and it's still wrapping it around all the way up and then down back into the states again. So there is still dustings going on. There are still storms going on as far as snow in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, all that stuff. So this is still lingering as we see this low pressure. There it is right there. So I want you to follow this. It's right now it's over Alabama, Mississippi area, and then it's going to move forward in the, in the coming days. And then by Monday, we're going to be dealing with that po the potential nor'easter. And look, the low pressure is very close. Now, if you guys remember in the last nor'easter we covered, we were talking about how this low pressure determines... Um, the possibility, if this is going to be Winter Storm Skylar, whether or not that snow gets pulled all the way to the coastal states. Remember how we had that blank gap 
uh, near areas of Nantucket and Massachusetts, that is because this low pressure was much closer to the coast and that allowed that gap to happen. Now if you notice this new low pressure for this nor'easter is out farther into the Atlantic Ocean. So if this snowstorm does form like it shows that it's going to, that means more snow for the coastal areas, but that's also going to be um, uh, beach erosion, uh, storm surge, you name it, because this is a counterclockwise motion. Again, guys, anything in the Atlantic Ocean this time of year, especially these low systems that move out from the middle of the U.S. into the Atlantic, they are spinning in a counterclockwise motion. So that is pulling moisture out from certain areas and then pushing it way back in. And again, because the low, the center of this low is out far into the Atlantic this time, that puts the entire coast of the Northeast um, under... Uh, sn uh, basically snowstorm watch if that's what this is going to turn into which it looks like it's going to we're talking three days from now uh, like I said in the last video the 11th <clears throat> excuse me the 11th through the 13th will probably be the worst of it but also not not discluding other states we're talking North Carolina Virginia and even parts of South Carolina you can see how close that low gets to you guys before it starts it's like it's spin so it kinda comes out this way it meets with that um, explosion of storms that we're watching right now in the Gulf right here you can see this passes over Florida some of it moves down towards Cuba and then the excess of it gets pulled in by that second low pressure that's forming in Texas they both meet right here and they begin to spin right around this area so um, also like I said South Carolina North Carolina Virginia we got Maryland in there and then as we move up into Delaware where basically that cold weather might turn uh, become snow uh, regardless you are gonna have coastal issues lots of wind that is the thing with these nor'easters guys is when you're dealing with too low pressure systems they cause a lot of wind because not only are they doing their own spin in a counterclockwise motion they are also wrapping around each other and that adds to the dramatic effect of what a nor'easter is and that's why um, they have a separate name for it and it's not just a low pressure system it's a nor'easter and we've just been unfortunate in this last couple of weeks to have three of these things and it's looking like this third one is taking shape for sure so that's really the basic data we have for this right now uh, you could see right here is where things are going to start to get serious right on the border of North Carolina and Virginia and then that spin is going to start moving out into the Atlantic Ocean and that is what's going to pull the potential uh, winter storm Skylar across the Great Lakes and then into the Northeast so that's where we're at now guys we'll take one more look at this chart only because it's like one of the coolest charts I know of and that I love to look at besides the lightning chart now as I back up here you can get a better idea of what I'm explaining as far as the snow still going on in New York uh, let's back this up you can see that spin going on here that counterclockwise spin that is the remnants of that last nor'easter as we move forward you can see it is still being pulled into the northeast states here and that's why we're still getting that snow but then we have that warm moist um, system that is blowing up in the Gulf that is going to pass over Florida it's going to cause some issues in the Panhandle and then into Mississippi uh, Georgia and then even South Carolina and then that second low is going to meet with it and then it's game on from there and that's when we really really need to pay attention to where that low pressure is compared to the coast because that's what's gonna you're gonna see a lot of red flag warnings going on um, along the coast over the next couple days red flag warnings are a uh, very high wind or um, I'm sorry the red flag warnings are actually fire warnings I'm sorry about that you're gonna see a lot of uh, beach warnings for coastal flooding erosion um, and again because of the spin some of the areas are gonna have water pulled out and then as it moves up the coast that water is going to be pushed in so coastal flooding which leads to beach erosion and that happens in snowstorms too so it's not just a um, uh, a warm moisture system that does those types of things so we could be dealing with snow and coastal flooding at the same time which is never a good thing and then if you guys notice not to add to any more of the bad news as we get to this 200th frame down here look at this we have another system it's a little bit more south than that last one we saw which formed up by uh, Oregon and uh, Northern California those areas in Washington this one's coming across a little bit more shallow so but because of we have that constant flow coming up from the Gulf that may get pushed up into the Northeast as well uh, so 
<laughs> we can only uh, guess at this point what that's going to turn into. And at this rate, who knows? You know, it's you know, it's just this. The entire month of February was insane, and now we're into March, and things just have not slowed down. The only thing we can hope for is for some warm weather, so at least it's not a snow situation for the Northeast anymore. But uh, that's where we're at right now, guys. Um, I will bring more updates. Uh, definitely later on this evening, I will have one. Sorry it took me so long. I had a few things to take care of. But as of right now, uh, southern Florida, and then eventually we have the, uh, the lightning right here, which is where you're going to see those tornado watches and warnings. That does extend into Louisiana, even though you don't see the lightning. Uh, don't base the lightning on where the uh, tornado watches and warnings are. That's just where lightning happens to be at this time. With that said, guys, I will talk to you all very soon. Again, this was a cover for our third possible nor'easter and possibly winter storm Skylar. Talk to you guys very soon. I hope you're having a great weekend. Take care.